church more and more. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching really good today. Do you know what he was saying there? Your, your attendance at church touches other people. It encourages others. Like the old poem says, the preacher does better when you are there. It's hard to preach to an empty chair. Hello. Come on, somebody. And it's not just about the pastor. It's about your family. It's about your grandkids. How many of you realize that it's not what you do that's important? or Say that's important. Excuse me. It's what you do that's important. You can say all day long, I'm a believer in Jesus. But when you come to the house of God, what you are saying in a very real and a very practical way, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. My relationship with God is very important. The other other believers are very important. Amen. And so I, I believe in all of that today with all of my heart. We've got to be faithful to the house of God. God is looking for those who will be pillars in the house of the Lord. You don't want to know what a pillar is? A pillar is something that lends support and gives structure. And by the way, if you ever notice, you go to any place where there's pillars, the pillars are always there. Hello? Come on, somebody. Who says, I want to be a pillar in the house of our God? Amen. I preached all that to get to this third and final point. This is the part that's down inside my spirit today. Number three, if you're in a season of influence and you want to be faithful, number three, you've got to remember who brought you to that season of influence? Remember who brought you there? If David were here in person today, I believe that he was standing right here, he would tell me, Pastor Bob, pound the pulpit right here. This is the most important part. If he had only done this, his life may have went in a different direction. He may not have had that affair with Bathsheba. His, he may have stayed faithful. Now, after David had sinned with Bathsheba, had her former, had her husband murdered, God revealed that to Nathan the prophet. You might remember the story. Nathan came and very skillfully confronted David in a way that David's own judgment convicted him. And in the midst of that discourse between Nathan and David, Nathan speaks for the Lord, okay? And God reminds David of how he got to where he was. If you are a place of influence and you've been there for a long time, it's easy to forget how you managed to get there. And what happens is pride becomes begins to come in. And we think that we find ourselves in a place of influence because of our own ingenuity. We think we're the ones that we work so hard to get the raise in our company and we wonder and we wonder we just know how wonderful that we are and we look at our nice home and we think to ourselves look at all of that I have accomplished for myself. Those were the kind of thoughts that David had but Nathan brought his attention to the fact that God had brought David to the place where he is. I want to read this scripture for you. It's powerful, all right? David had just been confronted about his sinfulness. He realized that what he had done, that, that it's going to come, be found out, that he needed to repent. 2 Samuel 12, verse 7 and 8. It said, Then Nathan said to David, he said, you are the man. <laughs> In other words, you're, you're the one who, who has committed this trespass. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Now notice all the words, I. This is God speaking in first person. He said, I anointed you king over Israel. And I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all of this had been to too little I would have given you even more you see David had forgotten who brought him there David had forgotten the blessing of the Lord David had forgotten that it was God who chose him to leave the sheep in the wilderness he forgot that it was God's hand upon his sling that had killed Goliath he forgot it was God's hand that had delivered him from Saul's spear he forgot that it was God who had given him victory over all of his enemies it was God who had given him 
him the wisdom to rule and to reign and to expand the kingdom. It was God's favor upon him that allowed the tribute and the money and the blessing and the wealth to start flowing toward David. And God was reminding him, him of that. He was saying, look, I am the one that brought you here. It wasn't your doing. You had really nothing to do with it other than the fact that I chose you. Come on, somebody. I'm here today to tell you that we can't get proud of ourselves. We've got to look and say, look, all the honor, all the glory doesn't go to me. It goes to Jesus Christ. I love 2 Samuel 8 and verse 14. It kind of sums up David's life. This is what it says. It says, the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. Who gave victory to David? The Lord did. David didn't. David couldn't say, I, I won the victory everywhere I went. No, sir. It says the Lord gave David the victory everywhere he went. And you see what had happened? He had forgot all of that. He had forgot all of that. He got to that place of influence and he thought, man, I'm just entitled. If I want Bathsheba, I'll have her. If I kill Uriah the Hittite, her husband, hey, one man dies by the Lord as well as the other. He was just hardened to all of that. He forgot that it was God who had established him there in the kingdom. David's not the only person who's forgotten that. In our family, we got lots of preachers. Lots. Sometimes we get together and we share stories. We don't tell names, but we tell stories. We're looking for sermon illustrations. Come on, somebody. We get together and talk. Amen. And one of those roundhouse deals where we're all sharing stories, one of the families shared this story of a, of a man who at one point in time was giving $72,000 a year tithe. How many said I'd like to just have his salary just for like two months? Amen. Come on. That's a good salary if he gives $72,000 a month in a year in tithe. Hello. That's almost three quarters of a million dollars income in one year. And, 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 and the guy said, man, this guy was so humble. He talked about where he'd come from and tears would stream down his cheeks. He, he, would, he, he, he would get in the shower. His wife said that he got in the shower and he would sing thanks and praise to God for where God had brought him from. He was so, so tender. For the Lord and God was using his gifts and talents but unfortunately the day came around and he looked and thought you know I'm so good at what I'm doing and 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 you know I really deserve better I, I deserve better than the wife that brought me here uh, you know I, I, I deserve better you know to than, than, than to be with her I mean and so he had an affair with the secretary he divorced his wife had stood by him all those days when he had no money and worse he left the house of the Lord and he left his God and he, and he began to have all kinds of other influences in his life. Well, you say, what happened to him? Let me tell you what happened to him. He just kind of faded away. He just faded away. And, and, and I recently heard that he's simply living in a one-bedroom apartment all by himself today. I'm just telling you, he had fallen from his place of influence. And I don't know about you, but in my own life, when I get to feeling like I'm all that, and the french fries, and a happy meal, and all that put in a paper bag the Lord can remind me real quick hey buster you need me amen is there anybody that the Lord's ever said that to don't get feeling so proud about yourself because you ain't nothing except what I make you to be hello is there anybody that knows that down deep inside their soul amen and so sometimes I gotta go back over my history with the Lord amen and I gotta realize the things he set me free from when I was a young person and the things he forgave me from when I needed forgiveness and I got to go back to remember amen that first time I ever tried to preach and I preached for exactly nine minutes I had 17 scriptures that were in that message and after I got done the pastor I'm not kidding you the pastor got up and he said if you think that sermon was bad you should have heard mine amen my first that's literally what he said I hung my head in shame and left that place hey I'll tell you something I remember that and I remember how the Lord had to encourage me along the way and I remember the moments when I cried out to the Lord and I remember the moments when I studied and I and I worked and I tried 
but it wasn't enough and God came through and he gave me that precious Holy Spirit anointing come on somebody how many know what I'm talking about amen let me tell you something I'm not nothing except what the Lord has made me amen and I want to give him praise because he's been more faithful to me than I've been to him every time I had a need he provided it he provided me a house at 606 West 16th Street in Big Spring Texas rent free for me to live in for a year come on he's provided everything I ever needed he's provided checks in the mail he's provided help along the way he's provided people that I didn't even know that they walked in the door and they said look man I'm here to help and encourage you and pray for you come on somebody we need to sometimes rehearse our history with the Lord I don't know what your history is but I can tell you you got some stuff back there you need to say God you brought me through that and you brought me here today and I'm not going to forget it I'm going to be thankful for it I'm going to believe you for the future because I know who you were in the past if you were faithful in the past you're going to be fed all the rest of the days of my life. Oh, come on, somebody. I can tell you that God is faithful. He's faithful. Don't forget where you came from. Amen. Is there anybody say, yeah, I came out of a pit. I was in the miry clay. Oh, but he picked me up the miry clay and set me on the rock Christ Jesus amen he cleaned me up he washed me up oh hallelujah he wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life I didn't deserve any of that but he did it anyway because of his great and wonderful and powerful love for me I love him today don't you